Hey everybody, my name is Sam. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to the next part of our mobile home renovation. We're in 1988 Palm Harbor single eye mobile home and where we are continuing to renovate our boys bathroom or spare bathroom. Bathroom number two. Whatever. We're here. In today's video we install a little bit of accessories and install this tub surround that you see behind me. I also give you my number one tip and trick on how to get 100% crisp, clean, perfect caulk lines. So if you're interested in that or otherwise want to see what more we're getting into, stick around. Installing the toilet paper holder was pretty easy. We did not choose to put it in the drywall because drywall is not very forgiving when things are tugged really hard or ran into. So we decided to put it in the actual wood of the vanity where it is rock solid and should not have any problems. The towel bar over here is mounted and secured to the blocking that we put in this wall. If you remember back when we framed the bathroom, we put that giant two by six or two by four blocking in the wall and this is anchored in super tight. Not only is it a towel bar, but it may also serve as a grab bar if things go south in the bathroom. With the accessories installed, we could then jump into installing this tub surround. It was not too bad overall, but I did mess up, so you guys will wanna probably check this out. Since we're working with a non-standard length or size of bathtub, ours is 54 inches and the standard size for homes is 60 inches, we had to get a five piece universal kit for our tub surround for the shower. This is a sturdy fit brand available from the Home Depot. It is extremely thick and extremely durable. After looking at several different surrounds in the store, we decided to spend more and get the heavy duty one because we did not want to invest all of this time, effort, and money into a surround or a bathroom remodel and just to have the surround fail us or not last. This is pretty easy to install. It's basically trim to fit, put it in place. When you've got everything right, you then apply your adhesive on the wall and press it and it glues up to your drywall. Now, that's probably easier said than done. So let's actually do what I just said. I'm going to go ahead and use a hole saw, a smaller one for the tub spout, and a large one for the faucet handle, and drill through this panel from the back to the front, and hopefully everything lines up correctly. Ha, ha, ha. 
I guess it twisted up on its plastic cover, but that's all right. The hole is drilled, and now we can do the second one. I put my hand behind the board so that I don't go all the way through and hit the wall. It also helps to counteract my pushing of this. Looks like I put some holes in it. Now let's see how these things line up. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I measured the wrong end, uh, the wrong side. So, <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> this is double sided, I hope. <laughs> All right, I have the surround taped up in place and everywhere where it's going to be mounted. What I need to do next is pretty unique for our bathroom since we have a window here. I need to mark on the back side of the panels with the pencil where I need to cut these so that we have the window opening framed out correctly and everything. Other than that, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of variances with how thick it is. So I may consider trimming these to width, make them a little bit narrower. But then again, it's also more waterproofing for this room. So... I'll decide what I'm going to do there, but at least the next step for us for sure is to mark on here on these three pieces where we need to cut them for the window and then actually cut those. While this tub surround is advertised as you score it and snap it to break it or cut it where you want with a utility knife, I've tried that and it's not working. So. Oscillating tool to the rescue. I'm just going to cut this thing where I want it. Yeah, it's louder. Yeah, it's dustier But there's more control with this tool and I only have one of these so that's what I'm doing All right, my piece is trimmed. I have all my cuts done Let's fit it back in here and see that it looks great so we can move on to the next step Which is gluing it to the wall Everything looks good, so we are now ready to go ahead and start gluing this tub surround to the wall. For this particular surround, they say to use a good construction adhesive, so I have some liquid nails, heavy duty here. And then as far as spreading it out, I have a notched and V-groove trowel. I'll probably use the square notches on this one, but basically whatever you want just to smooth it out so that you have the most surface area between the wall and your tub surround that you're putting up. I held the flat panels up in place and used a pencil I traced along the edges to show me whenever I pull them off the wall where to put the glue and where they go back in place. I'm going to go ahead and start with this main wall here and then I'll do the front and the back. One down and two more to go. Not too difficult of a job, but you will use a lot more construction adhesive than you think you would. I used two full tubes on that one and it was still perfectly fine, but not a solid sheet of glue. So I would uh, hope that the one, two, three, four I have left will do the job. One, two, three, four.
water in there. <laughs> At least I said everything hooked up is the last thing. <laughs> All right, so this has an O-ring inside, which allows us to slip it over the copper pipe and then tighten down the set screw and makes it fit well without any leaks. Before we do that, I'm going to fill up all of this around the pipe with silicone so it doesn't ever get water behind it. Alright, the tub faucet and shower is all hooked up, plumbed up. Let's go into our first water test and check for leaks and see that everything works great and looks wonderful. So it is great to see that it all works, there are no leaks. Water flows where it's supposed to and goes where it's intended to as well. The shower head works great. We have our hot water up here. The lines are not crisscrossed and that's all really nice to see. I debated whether or not to show you guys my extreme mess up with the tub surround, but hey, why not? If nothing else, it should serve as even more of a reminder to make sure you measure correctly before you go drilling your holes. Don't get in a hurry like me, thinking you're correct, taking for granted you're correct, and uh, doing it backwards. This piece being the back or the one that was not originally intended to face the customer or, in, or user of the shower doesn't really stick out. I look at it, it's still glossy, it still has the same kind of finish, and if you didn't know, the only hint or indication you would have that something seems odd is the fact that there's a little bit of text stamped at the bottom of the panel, which is, I guess, manufacturing lot numbers or whatever from the factory when they made it. Otherwise, no one would really know. So, consider it wabi-sabi. You always have to have a little wabi-sabi and everything, so apparently I chose to do it to our $200 tub surround. Now that the tub surround is all installed and it has had, realistically, more than a couple of days to set and glue up nice and tight, I am preparing to caulk all the joints and seal it up to make it one giant piece of water prevention for the shower. What you can see behind me is the start of my method of taping off all the joints and all the seams prior to caulking it. I'm using plain blue painter's tape. I think this is probably a two inch wide roll. I like this stuff because it's easy to peel off and doesn't leave behind any residue or problems. And as far as caulking, I'm using GE name brand Supreme Silicone Kitchen and Bath. This one is clear because we don't really want to see the caulk lines in this situation. It's more of just keep the water from going where we don't want it to go and otherwise just let it disappear. So I have already taped off most of the joints. There is one more to do here that I want to show you guys as far as how I tape off joints prior to caulking. So come with me in the shower. <laughs> Here in the shower, we have the last little overlap of the corner piece to this front panel. And while it is overlapped a good three inches, I'm still gonna apply a bead of silicone to the outside as an additional measure to keep water from getting back in here and ever causing any problems. This is after all a kid's bathroom and who knows what really will happen. So what I'm gonna do is put the painter's tape on the left and right side of this joint, leaving just about maybe an eighth inch of a gap. What that gap is going to be is the amount of silicone that I leave in this area. So adjust it for whatever you want, for whatever kind of joint you're working with. But otherwise, I'm going to tape the left and the right from the top to the bottom.
all of my vertical joints are taped off and that's what I'm going to do first. So let's go ahead and apply the silicone. I'm just going to lay a bead in here and then smear it with my finger. Once I get all the verticals done, I'll then peel the tape off. The key is to take the tape off before the silicone dries, otherwise you're going to pull all your stuff off and just have to redo the whole project. So let's do that and try not to end up wearing the silicone caulk all over my clothes. With all the tape there, it really goes very, very quick. As you see, I'm able to slap that down there in like a minute and a half, according to the camera. Now I'll just go back, smooth it out with my finger pretty well, make sure you have a pretty good finished bead, and then pull the tape off and leave it. Don't let anybody touch it, because it'll mess up all that work. All right, I brought in the trash can out of our kitchen, because as I peel this tape off, it's gonna go right in the trash can. Try not to make a big mess and get covered in silicone. The best thing to do is to wear gloves with this, but I don't have any or I don't know where they are. So I'm forging ahead. If you're like me and you don't have gloves and you find yourself covered in silicone, nail polish remover with acetone works pretty good, along with soap and water and lots of scrubby scrubby. All right, let's pull this tape off. This is where you want to try and do one solid piece, if at all possible, when you tape these off. I wasn't able to because of these little shelves with the tubs around, but one solid piece comes off really easily and it's just easy to do. Let's do the easy stuff first. For the easy ones, now let's do the not so easies. So there you go. Our tub is all caulked up, the bottom is done, the top is done, and now we just leave it and let it sit. It needs to cure at least 12 hours. We probably won't let any water or anything come in here for about 24, but otherwise this makes the tub and shower unit waterproof. Not really yet ready to be used. There is something missing. However, we do already have our shower curtain and shower rod, and that will be installed along with our vanity mirror and a few other ends to finish out this bathroom, or at least get us super, super close in the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them for us down below. Otherwise, take care, and we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. Oh, this bathroom's getting smaller and smaller to work and film in. There's a toilet right there. Gosh! I was right into that toilet big time. I was twisting my knee in half. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it for us. If the fur fur. Yep. Where? Where in the world is everything going to go? Mess up all that work. There's that toilet again. See you next time on. Do you say the homestead? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bah. Let's go wash this off. Then we'll pull the tape off. Uh, I have to hug the tripod to move it.